Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're gonna go over every vehicle and weapon that's been identified for Battlefield 1. We're gonna start off with the airplanes. This British aircraft here is called the Bristol F2B, and it's a two-seater, as you can see here, where the secondary gunner gets a swiveling aerial Lewis gun. And despite it being a slightly larger aircraft, apparently it could hold its own against single-seat fighters as well. So this will be an interesting aircraft in the game, and I cannot wait to do teamwork with air vehicles once again. It's gonna be so cool having multiple aircraft with multiple seats. Now, thanks to help from my Facebook followers, we were able to identify this this plane here that is crashing is the Gotha GV. This guy was a heavy bomber used by the Imperial German Air Service. And as you can see from here, there are multiple seats with swivel turrets, pilots, tail gunners. It looks like a fun plane to be in. Then we have a single seater fighter here. This is the Sopwith Camel, a very, very iconic airplane from World War I. It was credited with shooting more enemy planes down than any other allied fighter. Toward the end of the war, it started to get outclassed by some of the other fighters, so they started to use it in more of an air-to-ground role. Now this next plane here was extremely difficult to identify, but thanks to some Facebook help, we identified it as the Halberstadt CL2. It's a German escort fighter and was more than capable of taking on other single-seater aircraft and even ground targets. As you can see, it's a two-seater and will likely be a good matchup against the Bristol F2B. And then of course all over the trailer was the Fokker DR1 single seat German fighter. This little guy saw widespread service and was one of the most effective fighters of the war. And it was also the fighter that the Red Baron used who was credited with 80 air combat victories. Now how about this crazy airship? I believe this actually is the Zeppelin L32. Originally I thought it might have been a different brand of airship. It's really hard to differentiate them, especially with this limited image here but during the war these things could drop a lot of bombs and they also had gunners so it's going to be very interesting to see how these things attack both air and ground targets all right let's move on to melee weapons and i mentioned in my previous breakdown video that i saw a spear in some of the concept art upon research i found this this is the german M1893 Cavalry Lance. It's, as far as I can tell, the only sort of lance or spear that uh, was even being used in the war. And I gotta say, if you were killed by this thing, holy crap, is that a shitty way to go. Then, of course, there's the scimitar here. It might only be a horseback weapon. Would be kind of cool if you could just have it in the trenches. Then, of course, there's a spiked mace. I also saw a very large knife. It could have also been a small sword. In fact, a lot of the soldiers in the trailer seem to be carrying some sort of sheathed weapon. And then of course we also see soldiers affixing bayonets and we are told that the bayonet attack is actually going to be a charging attack, which is awesome. So just to quickly reiterate what we know is in the game, we know there's bayonets, we know there's shovels, we know there's maces. I believe there's gonna be a spear, definitely a knife of some sort, probably multiple knives and multiple swords for that matter. Now let's move on and talk about the one naval ship that we saw. And although this image here has very limited detail, people online seem to think that this is the HMS Iron Duke. The profile certainly seems to fit the picture. This ship was classified as a dreadnought battleship in the British Royal Navy. She was armed with a main battery of 10 13.5 inch guns and was capable of a top speed of 21.5 knots. It'll be interesting to see if there's any other naval combat that we haven't yet been shown. Moving on to vehicles, we've got the Mark IV tank, which was incredibly popular and widespread throughout the war. Then there's the A7V Sturmpanzer wagon. This thing is just like a giant moving box for the Germans. And then there's the smaller FT-17 French tank that had the rotating turret on top, similar to modern tanks. And then thanks to the concept art, I've been able to identify the armored car that I saw uh, basically doing a jump off of a sand dune in the press footage. It's the British Rolls-Royce armored car. And as you can see, it's got a swiveling turret on top with a machine gun. It looks pretty awesome and I can't wait to try it out. And then Jack Frags mentioned in his video that he saw this car. It's the IGA-1 armored car, and it's got a sort of dome-like turret on top. Personally, I think this thing looks badass, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what other kind of armored cars might be in the game. And then, of course, we have the epic armored train. This is the uh, Zamoritz, or renamed as Orlik after it was captured. This thing looks amazing, and I just can't wait to see what armored train combat is like in Battlefield. That tops it off for vehicles. Let's move on to weapons, and with the help of the internet, I've been able to decipher quite a few more from the trailer. 
This guy in the corner appears to be some version of the MG-08 machine gun, which is definitely capable of being handheld while firing. We've also been able to identify this guy's dropped weapon as the Winchester 1897 shotgun, also known as the trench gun. And then as mentioned in my previous breakdown, this guy is carrying a improvised anti-tank grenade made by fashioning six stick grenades together. And then thanks to YouTuber CN Arsenal, we have identified this weapon as the Gewehr 98 with a side-mounted scope. And again, thanks to CN Arsenal for identifying this stubby rifle here as the Lee Enfield Mark III. Now this next one here is something that my Facebook community helped me try and identify and we found out that it's essentially a incorrectly modeled weapon. It seems to be the cross between an Italian cavalry carbine and then the German Mauser Car 98AZ. So basically we're not really sure which gun this is going to be but I assume it's going to be one of those two when the modelers kind of fix it. And then again CN Arsenal has identified the weapon that this guy is holding again as the MG-08. He said the MG-08-15 so I guess there's some variations of this machine gun but now we know that he's holding that type of machine gun which seems to be something that maybe normal soldiers can get as well. Now I feel weird about confirming that this is the M1911. We all know that that gun existed back then. It was a popular handgun. There's plenty of weapons that had similar profiles to this in the same time period but chances are it is the 1911. And then we have the Mauser 1918 Tigevere anti-tank gun. That thing is huge, absolutely massive. It might be a battle pickup or it might be like kind of your, your engineer anti-tank rocket equivalent. Um, it's pretty cool looking and I'm quite curious to see how it works. And then we have our cool key art guy who's holding the Mauser C96 in his hand and on his hip there is an MP18 submachine gun. We also have the oh so recognizable Lewis gun. We saw this one mounted on an airplane as well. A lot of the machine guns are multi-purpose so you'll see them handheld or mounted on a tripod or mounted on planes. Now during the press stream I saw a bunch of tripod mounted water-cooled machine guns. It could have been the Vickers machine gun. It could have been the M1917. It could have been uh, any of the other water-cooled machine guns out there but I have a feeling that we're going to see probably both of these two machine guns. And then I also saw what I believe is the Beretta M1918. It was a top feeding small handheld weapon. So this is basically another SMG developed by Beretta. Very weird in design. I'm curious to see how it's aimed. But anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for what I know is in Battlefield 1. I'll put the list in the video description so you guys can kind of refer to it and maybe we can add to it as more information comes out about the game. I'm really excited. It's fun doing the research. I'm learning a ton about the aerial vehicles. There are so many of them in World War One. So many weapons. So much cool stuff to get into. Let me know what weapons you guys are looking for to using the most and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.